Hello and welcome to Andy's Little Sci-Fi Horror Show. My name is Andy. Tonight I'm hanging out with Drew. Hi. In the mean streets of Worcester, Massachusetts. Yeah, and they are mean. And we're talking about what? We're talking about good old-fashioned TV, science fiction TV shows that are, well, not only iconic, but that we enjoy watching even today. Boil it down a bit. Well, okay, there are lots of different TV shows out there, lots of different science fiction shows. Where are we so headed first? Well, we're going to go That's to... That's Entertainment? That's Entertainment. Yes. For those of you who don't know what that entertainment is, so it's probably the central hub of comic book stores. It's like the, the place to go to for a serious shopping. And we're very close to it. Yes. And we're, we're going to make our first stop. In Worcester, Massachusetts. Dollar 25. Don't know why it's dollar 25, but hey, I'm going with it. Yeah, when you say sci-fi TV, I automatically thought of the X-Files. Anybody who's ever watched uh, the X-Files or uh, has even known of the premise knows it's very simple. You get David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. They're both actors. They're playing. They're basically FBI agents that investigate paranormal uh, crimes and uh, activities. Phenomenon. Also investigating a massive conspiracy. Boom, 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 boom. With the cigarettes, cancer man. Bum, 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 bum. The show was on for 11 years. It spawned two movies. I think the first movie was better than the second, but it was a great phenomenon. It was something that was interesting, and I, I enjoyed it. And I don't know about you. You enjoyed it? Oh, I loved it. You kidding? I was on the X Files back, like season one, back when people were like, "What the hell is this?" Oh, I remember watching it for the first time. It was so iconic. It was like it was right at the right time. It was like that that government. Paranoia conspiracy theory time right in 93. So it was pretty good. It was pretty interesting. I just thought the show was awesome. I went back and forth watching that in uh, Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> Tales from the Crypt is my other go to sci fi. For the longest time, it was, it was those two. I had my science fix and I had my horror fix. Another TV series that I enjoyed was Quantum Leap. Oh yes, Quantum that, Leap. That was a very good show. Lisa liked that with Scott Bakula. Yeah, it had Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell, and the idea was that Scott Bakula was a scientist who invented time travel, but his time travel theory only allowed him to travel in different people's bodies, so he would leap into people's lives. Hence the Quantum. Yeah. One second, we're at the store, so we're actually gonna on hold here. To be continued. Well, we just came out of that's entertainment, and I was just uh, telling Shanley I can't remember the last time I actually came out of that store and didn't get anything. Where are we going? Oh, I we're see where we're going. Way. I see where we're going. We're going this way. Where were we? We're talking about classic science fiction TV series. Now, no list of science fiction TV series would ever be complete without at least mentioning the Twilight Zone. <laughs> All right, that is a classic archetype TV series in the 1950s, narrated by Rod Zerling. It was an anthology show. Every episode of The Twilight Zone had great actors, they had great writers, they had interesting themes. They talked about post-apocalyptic nuclear Armageddon. And they, they, had, they covered a lot of stuff they, that, was, yeah. that was taboo. Every you could say. week was a new episode and you didn't know what you were going to get. And even when they reprised it again in the 80s, even though it was still pretty good because they used a lot of short stories from Stephen King, like yep. Grandma, and all of these stories that were written since the original show was on, up until the 80s, they had a whole bunch of plus of new short stories. So that's a classic example of a good science fiction TV series. The new Outer Limits. Oh yes, The Outer Limits. That one was just boring. But Twilight Zone had ironic twists. Yeah, that, that was the thing about Twilight Zone that was really good. Uh, Rod Zerling, who wrote that show, did a lot of st stories on that, was also responsible for the twist ending of Planet of the Apes. So, and not only that, he also worked on Night Gallery, which yeah, is where funny. Steven Spielberg got a lot of his uh, TV work done. He that's actually true. started there. Moving on to other uh, classic science fiction TV series, Lost in Space. I didn't know how far back you were going, but I was going to say Lost in Space. Yes. See, we're on the same wavelength. We know this. Erwin Allen. Uh, he did a lot of disaster movies like Poseidon, the Earthquake. He was also responsible for doing Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. He, he didn't did... do a fantastic voyage, did he? he? I think maybe. I'm not sure. I'd have to IMDB that one. 
I'm an expert. I have the internet. That is the quote of the night. Good man. I'm an expert. Bone, I have the internet. Erwin Allen produced this show. It's a classic. It's got Billy Moomy as a kid. Basically, it's about a family that is going off into space and Dr. Zachary Smith always screws up. He's like the Gilligan of the group. He basically screws up the every single uh, plot. Blames it on the robot. Every single plot. That they, like, we're going to go home. We're going to go home. It's clinking, clattering concoction of cogs and camshafts. Yeah, I know. He would always, he hated the robot, but the robot and him would always hang out. You know, personally, if I was that family, I'd just kick him off and keep him, like, leave him on the planet behind, you know? There is, of course, Battlestar Galactica. Like, Classic. Coming right off the, the wake of uh, success of Star Wars and the re excitement of Star Trek fans were coming back out of the woodwork mm -hmm. because of, you know, because of the sci-fi fantasy was back in the foreground in the media. Exactly. Came Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. For its time, it had a very military edge, a very intelligent w way of storytelling. It was situated, obviously, in the 70s with a lot of sexual innuendo, uh, even amongst mm -hmm. the uh, high-ranking uh, females. Oh, yeah. Had one, I of, the, mean, had one of the greatest uh, robots. The Cylons. The Cylons, which were a robotic race that uh, they uh, were fighting. The best part of that show is the pilot. They're like, oh, we're going to have peace with the Cylons. Oh. We're going to have peace. Then, of course, the Cylons come and, like, eradicate the entire species. Terrible. And that's the reason why they have... It's a ragtag fugitive fleet on a lonely quest to find a shining planet named Earth. Earth. Another TV series is Stargate. And this is a show that's based off the movie. Basically, it's about uh, this Stargate that's designed by an alien species to bring Earth people to their planet as slaves, but the Stargate was closed up. It was dug up later, and uh, the Stargate was then activated by us. And now we're basically fighting those same aliens that tried to enslave humanity millions of years ago. Smart move, people. <coughs> it was actually a really good show. It's an interesting show. It had uh, Richard Dean Anderson, who was MacGyver. Can't go wrong there. Well, you know, Gives a man a paper clip and a rubber band, and he can save the world. Or stop a nuclear meltdown, at least. With the moon's gravitational pull. Um, <coughs> but that morphed into other shows like Stargate Atlantis. But, uh, of course, we can't forget Star Trek. Star Trek is such a huge phenomenon. Okay, we're talking about Star Trek, the original series. Then the Star Trek uh, motion pictures came out. Star Trek 2, 3, 4, 5. Featuring Christy six. Alley. Yeah, Christy Alley was in Featuring Star Trek. Featuring Christy Alley. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty badass. She's a badass Vulcan. Um, Never mind Rup Ricardo Maltamon. Right? Oh, Never yeah. mind him. Come on! You gotta do it right. Sorry. No, it's okay. I'm the a Lucas Hound. I, I don't do that. I'm a Lucas Hound. You know? They didn't even stop with the original series. They had The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Star Trek, Voyager. Well, now let's be realistic. They did stop the series. And once again, popular sci-fi from the Star Wars films yep. brought back the next generation. Let's not even talk about the new Star Trek movie. You know? oh, yeah. Where'd you get that inspiration? Well, that was directed by J.J. Abrams. Yes. Of Lost. And don't be pissed at Lucas House because it took 40 years to make a good Star Trek film. <laughs> uh, Actually, I, I, I can't even lie. I had the Star Trek series. <laughs> and that brings it and round up an end to our a wink and nod to sci-fi TV. Uh,